Hello students, welcome to Saurav Sir's classes. Today we are going to discuss few numericals based on the SAT examination. So let us begin with our very first sum. So in our first sum we have in a classroom with 20 students, the average math grade is 60 and in another class with 10 students, the average math grade is 72. So here we are talking about two different classes with the attendance of 20 students as well as 10 students in each class whereas in the 20 students class the maths grade is 60% the average maths grade is 60 whereas in 10 students class the average math grade is 72. So what is the average math grade if you combine the two classes into one class? Okay so this seems to be a quite, quite easy sum where we have 60 in one class in other class we have 72 we need to combine both of them and find the average. So this can be done as 60 plus 72 divided by 2. So this gives us the value which is 66. So you may think that 66 is the average of both the numbers and the answer becomes 66 which is option D. But this is a wrong concept. Here we cannot take direct average of both the sums because we have different number of students in both the classes here we have 20 students whereas here we have 10 students so we cannot take direct average because uh, if we had same number of students we could have taken the direct average but the number of students are different here so we cannot take direct average for that first we need to calculate the total marks then we need to calculate the average from that so total marks in let's name class 1 of 20 students and the average grade is 60 marks so the total marks will be 60 into 20 which is 1200 so this is the total marks of 20 students and in class 2 class 2 we have 10 students and the average is 72 so 72 into 10 so the total marks of 10 students is 720 this is the total marks of 20 students whereas this is the total marks of 10 students so we need to add these two as well as add these two so total marks of one class the combined class here is one class combined class total marks of combined class will be equal to 1 to double zero plus 720 so this will give us 1 9 to 0 whereas total number of students total number of students is equal to 20 plus 10 which is equal to 30 now we have total marks and we have total number of students so now we need to calculate average marks so average marks will be equal to total marks that is 1920 divided by total number of students so this gets cancelled out this is 64 so as you can see 64 is the correct answer that is option b and not 66 so if you go directly by adding these two and dividing by two then we will get a wrong answer so answer is not d but option c which is 64 so you need to take care about the process of doing a sum and not get tricked by the question so this question is over now let's move on to the next question that is question number two so in question two you can see we have a and b are two consecutive positive integers okay so a and b are both consecutive numbers as well as positive as well as they are integers now which of the following is wrong so we need to check any one of these five options are wrong means four are correct so let us check with the first option so first option is a b is even so let us consider any number let us consider two consecutive numbers let a b is equal to 3 b is equal to 4 so a b will be equal to 12 which is a even number now let's consider a is equal to 4 and b equal to 5 where a we have considered an odd number b an even number and a an even number b odd number so in this case also a b is equal to 20 which is again an even number so we have considered both the possible cases two possible cases are a is odd b even or a even b odd so both in both the cases we have a b to be even therefore a is a correct option uh, means a is correct therefore our answer won't be a because we need which one of the five is wrong so let's check with option b 
So in option B we have A B square is even. Now let's go through the same examples. Now A is equal to 3, B is equal to 4. So A B square will give us 3 into 16 which is equal to 52. So here sorry this will not be 52 but this will be 48. 16 into 3 is 48. This is an even number whereas a is equal to 4, b is equal to 5. So a, b square will be equal to 4 into 25 which is equal to 100. Now again this is an even number. So we have considered both the possible cases. Here one case, here is the second case and both cases we have seen that the numbers are even. Therefore a, b square is even is also a correct statement. Therefore we cannot consider this to be our answer. Now let's check the third option which is c, a plus b is even. Now you can see in this example where we have a is equal to 3, b is equal to 4. So when we add these two we get 7. So this is not an even number. So in this case the statement does not satisfy. Let's check the other case where a is equal to 4, b equal to 5. So adding we get 9 which is also not an even number. So here also the statement is not standing correct. Therefore, A plus B is even is a wrong statement and we needed to find a wrong statement. Therefore, option C is a possibly correct answer. So here we have option C to be correct. Now let's check option D. So in option D, we have A minus B minus 1 is even. Now let's check the options here. 3, 4. So 3 minus 4 minus 1. So this will give us minus 2. 3 minus 4 is minus 1 and minus 1 is minus 2. So minus 2 is an even number. Let this be a negative number. This is a negative number but we have not been said that A minus B cannot be negative. We have been said that A and B are positive but the equation can give us a negative number. But this is even number. Whereas in the other example we have 4 minus 5 minus 1. So again we have minus 1 minus 1 is equal to minus 2. So here also again we have an even number therefore statement D is uh, correct statement therefore we cannot take statement D and since we have all of the above this statement means that all of the above that is all these four are wrong so this is not true because we have seen A is correct B is correct D is correct so this statement is also not satisfied hence we are left with only one statement which is option number C so option C is a wrong statement hence option C will be the correct answer to this question so we have got our answer to this question. So I will like to end this video here. You will find solutions to few more numericals based on these, this topic that is SAT examination in our further videos.